an icon of modern British design at an exhibition about his life's work. For almost six decades, Terence Conran has helped transform the British way of life. He's influenced how people live, shop, eat, and even educate themselves. A man of many talents. Being a designer in the early 50s or 40s when I started was very difficult indeed. Nobody had any appreciation of design, didn't understand the point of it, what it was for. So I've seen in these last 60 years uh, design turn to be something that is nationally important. Terence Conran was born in London in 1931. He was interested in arts and crafts from an early age. He studied textile design and in 1952, at the age of 21, set up his own furniture making business. He began making furniture for offices and public buildings, but he soon moved on to homes. And because he disliked the way retailers presented his products, he opened his own store in 1964. Habitat was born. People only buy furniture occasionally, so I thought, well, this shop must sell all the other things you need for a home, for the kitchen, for the bedroom, textiles, light fittings, even toys for children. And it was an idea that worked brilliantly well. Business boomed. More stores followed across Britain, France, Spain and Germany. We even had people like the Beatles coming, doing their shopping there. The exhibition at the London Design Museum runs until March 2012. The museum itself is part of Terence Conran's portfolio. In 1989, he founded it as a showcase for contemporary design, architecture, product design and fashion. It was one of the first of its kind and is visited by more than 200,000 people every year. The point of the Design Museum is not to preach to those who know about the subject in advance. It's not just for the specialists, it's not just for the expert, it's not just for people who wear Japanese suits like me. It's meant to, un to help people understand the world around them. The Design Museum reflects just one of Terence Conran's many enthusiasms. Another is on the south bank of the Thames. Butler's Wharf is a former warehouse complex. Terence Conran came across the abandoned buildings during a boat trip almost 30 years ago. He bought them and turned them into one of the most desirable places to live in London. But he had his critics. The estate agent said, don't you know, nobody will ever cross the river from the city. Uh, so I always hope that I might find one of these estate agents on a nice warm Sunday and be able to push them in the river and let them swim back to the other side. <laughs> Many of the restaurants in Butler's Wharf have taken their inspiration from Terence Conran. As a student, he discovered French cuisine on a trip to France, a revelation compared to the dull post-war British fare. Food turned into another big passion. He opened his first restaurant in 1953, serving food inspired by French cuisine. Terence Conran was one of the first to introduce Mediterranean cooking to the masses. He now owns 40 restaurants around the world. So I came back from this trip thinking, well, that's the sort of life I'd like to live. And so, you know, really, what I, mostly what I've done in my life is try and remember those ideas and thoughts and the inspiration I got at that time and try to turn it into something that everybody can have. The Way We Live Now, a fitting title for a retrospective on Terence Conran. He says he hopes it will inspire the next generation. I'm very proud, being 80 years old, to have been able to mount an exhibition like this, that it should be seen as a useful exhibition for young designers.
and that they would say, well, if he can do it, I can do it too. Terence Conran, an icon of contemporary British life.